the HD took forever to render yesterday. Hopefully it'll be a little faster today. I try and stay on schedule over here. Artist Journal, November 24th, 2022, Berlin. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Delighting you on a weekday basis here with wonderful works like the kind we see right here with this modern-day Henri Rousseau of sorts, Mimo Cat, who is debuting on Ethereum with her first foundation drop. And so look at this. So anyways, and it really does scream Henri Rousseau when I, like the football players, as we pointed out in an earlier episode, much earlier, like two months ago, how uh, Henri Rousseau's football players and this striped shirt. And anyways, I love Mimo Cat's work for a couple of reasons. First on just purely formal grounds, which is, uh, technically and aesthetically, I just find they're very resolved. And, you know, it, it speaks to really the power of this space in a lot of ways. The, you know, put it this way, this character was developed on object is one way of looking at this. Because if you look at Mimo Cat's early work, maybe we should do that just really quickly here. If you look at Mimo Cat's early work, go to object, you will see that the stripe, the cat with the striped, uh, with the striped shirt, is a invention that happened while she was on the platform. Okay, like here it looks like with all the, you know, refinement and resolution, frankly, of a Disney character here, as I've been saying for weeks here, maybe a couple of months. But you go back, and you see the first striped cat is that this one look you can get a first appearance i mean for all you comic lovers out there this will probably disappear uh if you want a first appearance of what could be an iconic character out of the web 3 mimo cat i uh, here it is and you see like before that kitty gang uh just you know there's cats there's the illustrative power and then here you see the character and then disappears and then it reappears and then boom. So, you know, the power of a marketplace, the power, like confidence that comes when you are making art that people want to buy. And we see it over and over with famous artists where you see the rapid evolution once they have that marketplace and once they see people actually want to buy their work. Right. And I think that so this is just another kind of beautiful kind of Web3 story uh, of Mimo Cat. And then you see like these and here she goes off to Ethereum to debut and just a stunning uh, work here. The color. I don't know if you can see all those colors in the space. And let me just finally show you uh, Henri Rousseau's football players. And then we will run through the show because this show, there's serious mission creep on this show. Let me tell you, this started as like a 10 minute kind of let's have coffee. Now these coffees that we're having, but anyways, all good. Hopefully this doesn't kill anything. And okay. Well, anyways, you can sort of see the striped. Uh, yeah, you can see the striped. Yeah. Internet is not playing uh, playing nice with me, but you can see the stripe guys. That's what Mimo Cat kind of reminds me of. And you look at the style of Henri Rousseau, and it's kind of got a similar kind of look to it. So I'm a huge Henri Rousseau fan, and I kind of see it as like a, you know, in that tradition. And so anyways, this is not for sale, or sorry, it is for sale, but nobody has bid yet. Only a lowly 0.1 ETH for a Ethereum work for Mimo Cat. A quick correction. So remember I was talking about how there looks like there's some sort of bitmap filter on this guy? And you know, you see this pixelation and I follow Kurt Hustle Collective's work very closely because I'm a massive fan. I heard from Kurt Hustle Collective. Part of the beauty of this show is again that the artists often watch it. I couldn't be happier with that. That, you know, all these all these shows or whatever where people are advertising, trying to get people to watch, you couldn't ask for a better crowd, 
right, especially just as a foundational crowd to watch this show. Where is the, here it is. And I'm extremely grateful and it's just makes me incredibly proud and again, inspires me uh, to do this on, you know, daily and happily. Here it is. So Kurt Hustle, KHC, or sorry, JNK. And I asked him if I could read this and he said, yes. Hey, Poco, thanks for the shout out. Just for your information, we never use preset filter or outside app filters of any kind. All glitches, VHS effects, and textures are handmade. Real cam captures, video synth analog effects, etc. We actually create our own filters. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised. It is always an incredible production from the Kurt Hustle Collective. I have been a longtime fan as far as the NFT world being long time, which is about six months uh, in NFT land. Probably more though. I, I've liked Kurt Hustle from like maybe March or so uh, when I discovered them and I instantly love their work. Go to their old work. We've looked at it actually in a video art that's actually fun, I think is the name of the video if you wanna just see some more Kurt Hustle Collective in video form. So thank you for clarifying, KHC, and we'd love to hear from you. And here, just a quick show note. So these Twitter spaces that we're discussing, they are going to happen. I think we're settled on a time, which is Wednesdays at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. And a couple of kind of wrinkles. The only wrinkles here are I fly on a transatlantic flight next Wednesday and the following Wednesday, or two Wednesdays from then, I think I fly on a transatlantic flight back. So in between, maybe we can do a Wednesday. And what I might do is next week, we just put out some impromptu, a couple of spaces, a space or two. It's going to be a crazy week um, for me. So let's see. But I'd like to do just like a test spaces, because uh, I've actually never put one on, but I, I don't think it's rocket science. And so that's what I'm thinking for next week. I don't know if I'm going to be able to put out a show next week or anything. I'm only going to have one monitor, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a ton to get through. And if you haven't, if you just started subscribing, there are like dozens, there's like 80 videos that you can look at. And they're pretty, you know, what do they call them? Green, evergreen content. Okay. So anyways, thank you, Luis Lantigua, for confirming that 930 sounds great, New York. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so that's what we're going to aim for. Once everything's settled, like in a two or three weeks, it's going to be Wednesdays at 9.30 is what I'm thinking. And I'll load it all up here. And maybe we even get Twitch going and all that stuff. So it could be a lot of fun. Okay, Mikey de la Creme is curating a drop for Arthropo. And we have the legendary Rat Cloak uh, a, a work on Ethereum. And this epic work, which looks like, frankly, five paintings in one, maybe, yeah, five paintings in one is going to be on the, as part of the Arthropo drop. So that is huge. And I was just thinking, like, we haven't heard from Rat Cloak, and it's probably because Ukraine doesn't have power. Okay, so if anybody knows how to get this guy on Super Rare, I think it would be a really nice gift for a guy that's facing a lot of adversity right now. Uh, Bazaya got on, Art Deft, like, wouldn't it be great that once he gets the power back on, he just found out he's been onboarded. So I don't know how that works or who to talk to, or if anybody knows, uh, someone should send him a message with an invite. Uh, and I mean, super rare, I think would be greatly benefit from having an artist like Rat Cloak join the ranks there. A top tier artist. I think everybody would agree. Also a part of another top tier artist, uh, Mikey De La Creme is also has a myth work. So how cool is this? This looks like a Procreate version. He works generally in Procreate and in Microsoft Paint, from what I understand. Again, like a classic, classic artist. Look at this. The smoke. Uh, I think it's called Smoke Demons. We'll take a look in a second. So a little homunculi. Uh, so anyways, he's a classic artist from the Tezos ecosystem. And here is, I believe, his first Ethereum drop. So a pretty collectible thing nice kind of surrealism there he has a really interesting take on surrealism i think and maybe it's all accidental and just intuitive i don't know cool work self-portrait myth demons so i guess we see the demons here in the background very cool very very cool as as art deft de la creme says absolutely epic 
and he is actually on super rare as well so and we actually have a little announcement that he makes uh, we're going to cover that i uh, also the demo tapers thing you know we saw the video that with chase the sun I actually got a copyright flag and then it said, oh, it's okay. They're okay with you playing the song, but uh, yeah, copyright flag. So I'm not going to play the song, but you can see the video. Unfortunately, it's a good song, uh, but here's a different video. And this one is Haiti Rockettes, you know, well, let me see if I can blow it up a little bit here. So just a really cool uh, Nintendo glitch ROM. So getting the Haiti Rock treatment. So again, we continue to see this conflation of videos now like music videos, singles, uh, art, uh, and everything is, you know, again, this rebirth of the single, in a weird way, we're also getting with that the rebirth of the video. And they're kind of melding on object here. This is kind of an object thing, because for whatever reason, we're not seeing a ton of that on Ethereum. And if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. Uh, but, you know, so it's kind of interesting, probably just because there's more experimentation, because it's cheaper and all that business. Uh, Numinal, the guy, the pen plotter, who we profiled yesterday, he got some good news. He is on Super Rare, just announced last night. I've been onboard to Super Rare thanks to the Super Rare team. And again, we saw this name with Bazaya, Chris, Chris Ostoich, for making this happen. So maybe you can help Rat Cloak get on. That would just be the nicest Christmas gift for Rat Cloak. We'll be minting my Genesis before my one-year mint anniversary, December 1st. More details soon. And look at this. So again, this pen plotter, this looks like a home home version, right? It's like not too huge. Who doesn't want to own one of those? Like that is totally cool. Numinal minting soon on super rare. Like I got to get a pen plotter. Uh, just add it on the to-do list. Dana Ulama with a provocative thought on AI. And of course we know Dana Ulama from her cyberpunk works and chiming in, I think just yesterday on solar punk and cyberpunk terminology, I'd like to hear people's opinions on AI. If I train an AI with only my own artworks, with only my own artworks, and then I use that AI to make a new work, would that be my work? I would say, yeah, especially if you're hitting the, the button. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it just depends who hits the button. I didn't technically create it. No drawing or anything involved. Yeah, I mean, my answer to that would be you're as much of an artist as any other AI artist. If you prompted your own work, uh, especially if it's your own work, well, why shouldn't it be? Then it's, to me, uh, if anything, you're more of an author than any other AI artist because at least it's your art rather than, you know, going through the Google Images or whatever they use. I think they also use iStock and Getty Images. There's a little bit of controversy there with the stock, where the sourcing of AI images, but I think if it's your images, I would say definitely my two cents on that. A quick kind of also kind of in our salon of sorts here, uh, asking artists to pay to exhibit their work is a shame. And I kind of agree with this. Uh, you know, I have to say like, as a principle, I don't do, I would never do that now. Uh, and it's kind of like, it's when I started though, like in 2012 to exhibit works, like I just was a not, nobody uh, as far as like galleries or anything. And I knew a guy and it was like the super, uh, the super wonder gallery in Toronto. And he would just show like, 20 or 30 artists, kind of a salon of sorts, you could say, different kind of salon. And, but he would just show like 30 artists in his big space. And then he would charge people like, you know, 30 bucks a painting. He would just say, check and make sure he liked it, you know, enough to put it in the show. And I did do that. And it did actually give me a bit of a start. And it was like, okay, I have a work in a gallery and nobody wants to, but like in principle, I'm completely against it. And with the web, you kind of don't need to. Like on Twitter, I think you can actually get visibility if your work is provocative enough in a good way. Um, so yeah, that's my take on it. If you are just struggling to get anything and then it's not too expensive, but generally it's full of scams, you know, like people on Instagram or people will mail email you saying, hey, we want to show your work. And then the fine print is they want 600 bucks, you know, not cool in my opinion. There's a 
I hate to say it, but there are a bunch of leeches out there that want to take money from poor artists who are desperate just to be shown. Um, so what I'd consider, like what I saw at Super Wonder was not that. If anything, it was just kind of a cool little business model for unknown artists to get their work out there at very reasonable prices. I only did that once, uh, but it was great, you know, and uh, it really helped me just see my work in a gallery. And I actually sold the work. It was a nostalgia study of a Lego uh, non finito of one of the classic space uh, Lego works. Maybe I'll show that at one point. Uh, but let's speed up here. Okay, so Art Def de la Creme. Uh, he is on Super Rare. And thank you to Xerox and Chris Ostoich. Now, Art Def, I didn't really know too much about, but soon he's going to mint his Genesis. But I thought this was pretty impressive looking image. And then I did a little looking and he has a work on foundation and it's pretty cool. And yeah, like, I mean, just kind of an interesting, interesting work here. I guess you'd call this digital painting. O Peso do Mundo and a poem in, I guess that's Spanish. And yeah, Arte Deft. So sold for 0.12 ETH. And that is the only work on foundation, I believe, that he had. Um, unless, yeah. So anyways, pretty cool. I think he's on object too. So congrats to, I guess, Hebert. And so, yeah, so continuing on. So Lewis Osborne with a new work, and this was interesting. Person 8 at auction for 100. Bit of a metaphysical quality to this. Like, I, it was on the second pass that I started to notice what was going on here, this kind of window into the mind and all the experience of a person. And I thought that was actually quite a beautiful, original, kind of add a pro, added profundity to, you know, uh, the work. I, so anyways, pretty cool uh, concept there from Lewis Osborne. And there has been a bid from Scooney. And continuing on, and I got a notification from Adelia, I was pleased to say, because uh, the notifications were off for a bit. Uh, juice Pop, vibin', enjoying the wind blows with a cup of juice. What a lovely day. You can get this piece by burning five editions of Adelia token. So that is cool. So anyways, uh, very nice Adelia work. And maybe that's why I got the notification on it is because it's part of those people that have the token. And let me just bring that up here. So if you have five of these, uh, then see one's at 11 here, then you get this work. So interesting. Interesting from Adelia. And here's an artist I just saw on Twitter, which I thought was just kind of cool. Uh, Orkan Isayev, good morning. And just kind of a futurist illustration, almost a World Fair type square here. Almost a Tokyo sort of vibe, kind of interesting. So thought we could share that and kind of in a somewhat similar vein. Maybe a lot of you have heard of this artist, 0010. I had never seen them before, so I thought this was a pretty remarkable design work here, uh, like art design, uh, and just beautiful work. And this person's work, who is on Super Rare, goes for a lot of money. Last sale price 10 ETH, last sale price 5, so definitely has their collectors. And so anyways, really interesting artist. I think I brought up a couple of works. So yeah, longing. So pretty nice, right? I mean, I don't even know what to say. Just interesting color scheme, uh, kind of a matte feeling to it, kind of a black sun, almost an eclipse here. Interesting repetition of the figures. You know what it feels like to me? Like, you know what went through my mind? And it's probably wrong, but what went through my mind was, oh, is this like a AI inspired? It almost looks like AI is used as a source here. Just as a, you know, this is how I would use AI. And there's probably not AI. I'm going to get a, a message like KHC just sent, like there is no AI in my work. Um, but this is how I would use AI, which is I just use it as a kind of foundation. And then maybe I'd put a style on top of it, if you see what I'm saying. Uh, so who knows what's going on here. What you once were looking back at what you are now. And there's another one. Continuation. And this went for 10, right? So this is the one that went for 10. Okay, so again, really just cool artist, uh, you know, would look great in a store window. Nice kind of textured background there too. 
Very interesting. So someone who I haven't seen before, illustration, geometry, art deco. Definitely has an art deco feel to it, doesn't it? Dan Control, playing off the lighter theme, but now the lighter has friends. I quite like this piece. Uh, so we have five lighters in here. Buy for five, edition of 20. And it is starting to move. Yuri J, Lorna Mills, Fields, Ilave. So a nice kind of Amelia Versace, like all our friends out here are picking up Dan Control's work. Lighter Friends, Best Friends Forever. Very nice piece. I might have to pick that up too. A new one from our friend EdgeQ. And I thought this was another really nice piece. So I assume also using AI, like that Salvador Dali one we saw. I love this idea of doing artists in trading cards and then not being too literal about it. Like he's kind of using, this looks like, Paul Cezanne doing basketball. It's like a basketball card, but instead of just doing a portrait of Paul Cezanne, which is kind of like the most obvious thing you could do, he's actually using basketball as the foundation, and then we're going to put that in Paul Cezanne style using AI, and then, you know, put these, you know, in the classic casing here and everything. So it's super cool, the game by Cezanne. And again, I'll have to bring up some of my old drawings that I've done where I would use these collector cases too. I will, I, we're gonna come back to Edge Q, so we'll get our opportunity to do that another day. Look at this work by Dexter. I thought this was a very, very nice work. He put this out on OpenSea, 0.03 ETH. I don't know if it's an edition of one, I didn't look, but I thought a pretty nice work and kind of cool subject matter, you know, some girls on the basketball course with some cool graffiti and just very cool. I, I really like this work. So interesting painting from Dexter. And then Jan Lucas Magone with a new, I believe this would be a digital painting. And this is kind of in their style. So just kind of interesting mix of skeletons and flames that are kind of in pink and yellow. We are energy and destruction at the same time, burning inside, dying at the same time. You could almost mint that on type.art as a little poem. That's some nice, nice wordsmithing. Uh, continuing on, sad guy. A new discovery for me. I think there's sad girl and there's sad guy. And sad, yeah, beautiful work, glitch work, in my opinion, just taking some animes and glitching them out. Uh, sometimes you don't, yeah, like I don't know how they're doing it. Uh, Buy for 90 cents, edition of nine, still available. I picked one up. And this is not for sale yet. It was just minted also by Sad Guy. Baceta is bus in Spanish, I think. And just another kind of cool anime glitch, you know, so you could probably do this all day. And it's pretty effective and a nice kind of monochromatic look to both these pieces, which also helps. And they loop really well too. Uh, a lot of sad guys work. Let's see how this loops. Yeah. So anyways, sometimes it's like infinite. Uh, some of the other ones we've looked at those in a previous episode, Uxine with a new work. This is called burnout.gifs with some really cool uh, lettering there. Warning flashing images indeed. And so we have a skull in a massive gif thing. Very nice composition again. And I love the pixel work here, Uxine. Uh, immer, in German, we'd say immer like maybe creative, my German's not that good, but always creative over there. A beautiful work, a special edition from Popple in our digital antiques roadshow of sorts that we have here. It's like the, the antique roadshow meets, uh, I'm gonna do research, I was gonna say Gertrude Stein's uh, salons here. I'm gonna do research on Gertrude Stein's salons and exactly how they were done before we do our Twitter spaces to really try and make a real salon there, by the way. So anyways, here's Popple's work where he's adding color. The others were monochromatic. And so enough, interesting special edition because there's no words in here either. So a true special edition of the Pixel Ankton series. And I think I, yeah, so there's four, right? This one here, this one here. And you see how good these would look on a wall? You know, you get all four and then maybe you get the special edition, put it on a different wall. So it's looking good. I was starting to get tempted there at just six Tezos each. Very nice work. So more 
kind of I'm, what I'm tempted to call Japanese. I'm not sure if that's Japanese here, uh, as you can see here. Uh, pixel art, Harbor, just found on uh, Twitter. You know, and you wonder, like, if there's no blockchain or anything, these guys would probably still be posting this. So uh, I'm like, where's the link where I can buy this for two Tezos or something, you know? So very, very nice work here from Noma, Nona, Nona Menno Socks, a.k.a. Robin. So FYI, I draw, I music. And look at this. This is a very ambitious pixel work, pixel art work here. This is by Zebuka, all-time Twitter favorite repost to just convey the message that you can find me on pretty much every social under this under the same under the name Zebuka. So look at Zebuka's work here, and you can't actually see it that well. Like this is a massive work, so I brought it up just so you can see how huge this is. So yeah. Like, I mean, how ambitious really this is as a pixel artwork. And you gotta love the top of it. Like, I mean, the whole thing, even this little flying dragon, like the never ending story or something in this, you know, temple here. So just a stunning, stunning work. Kind of has a bit of a Christmas feeling, but maybe a winter feeling, but not sure. Maybe that's just the color. So anyways, that is Zebuka. Pretty cool. Mech.txt is up to more shenanigans here. Work in progress, snippet on what Ice Rain and I are working on our second project already. Pure codes, no libs. We've been working on how to translate my dither into codes, making it versatile. How cool is this? Uh, that sounds very promising. Can't wait to show you all our next progress. So much awesome things we got in line. So this could be on FX hash. And we have a little video here that they shared with us with just what this is going to look like. I think they're calling it ice rain. We're going to look. So, and the colors are super interesting. So anyways, it looks very, very promising here. And I think we have a piece here. So this isn't the ice rain series, but you start to see, yeah, so this looks super promising. So this is coming out soon. And here's another uh, some practice from mech.txt with some just beautiful color here and really starting to experiment because this looks like a landscape here, but here we see patterning. And this is just before the nine to five, more color tweaking, like many of us, uh, we're just squeezing in time to participate in this wonderful NFT world, NFT land. This might be too big. Let's show it like this. Salem cheeks with a new work, a new GIF work. Uh, and what is this? Mini 4WD, playing Mini 4WD cars when I was little. And it's just a cool work, uh, cool pixel artist. And you see like the little remote control cars and it gets run over by the big semi there. And yeah, so they put out some work. They don't put out work very often. Yeah, you might recognize some of these though. They're kind of, they're works you've seen around if you've kind of been around and like pixel art work. So that's Salim Cheeks. And some more, I think this is Japanese uh, work. And I just thought this was interesting. Like just, again, this is an international, you know, I guess it's going to call it an international salon here, an international program. And I love it that way. So let's keep it as international as possible. It's very exciting. I mean, it's easy to forget, isn't it? So anyways, neo pop artist called Saito. And just interesting to see the experimentation here. You know, something like a little too over the line. So just kind of wild, wild stuff, right? So just a FYI over here. Very cool. Very, very cool. And more work by Saito. This is on OpenSea, by the way. You can find Saito on OpenSea. So just more interesting kind of far out illustration here. These are static works, of course. Continuing on, new work by Sean Luke. And we haven't looked at too much Sean Luke, so I thought we could take a look here. Just some nice animated abstract work. A lot of colors here. And you often see Sean Luke in Haiti Rockets uh, collector feed. So he's been around for a while, I think. And here's another very nice work. Another animated abstract, multicolor, geometric. So anyway, 
for your animated collection, animated abstract collection, Between Then, Mending and Tearing. And of course, here is Sean Luke's work. Probably a lot of you are familiar with him. So anyway, it's very cool, the brains. <laughs> uh, New York born based outsider artist, 30 plus years XP, here to share and collect art. And this is interesting, Joel, who, as you see here, works with Richie Houghton and is a resident at Fold London, visual artist. So I guess she does the visuals. And I remember Joelle from way back when I posted this TR909 ASCII and 808, and she was she retweeted it. And I remember the Richie Houghton connection. So anyways, some really cool stuff she has on object that I've never seen before. Cool, almost like those classic two colors that we keep seeing over and over, that kind of almost purple. This is blue and that neon pink. It's almost those cyberpunk vaporwave colors. Interesting. So pretty far out graphic here. And yeah, that's a 40 second movie. So we can't show the whole thing, but you kind of get the picture here. So Ego Death on the Dance Floor, MP4, already offers for 35 and sold out at 30 on the 3rd of November. So this sold out pretty quickly. Went to Mr. Houghton. I guess Mr. Houghton has a, look at this. Mr. Houghton has an object. I might have to kill, here we go. So I guess he was, maybe there's some music in here, or maybe he was just, he's a minimalist, of course, is techno. And yeah, how cool is this? So I don't want to load up too much Andy. Look at this nice Andy work. So anyways, the joy of collecting on Tezos. This is what it's all about. So we can all go creep in on Richie Houghton's collection and see what's going on over there. Exciting stuff. And yeah, you can see some of Joel's other work. Continuing on. Into AI we go, into our last section. You see this section is growing. Uh, uh, Charles AI had a interesting comment. Mid-Journey V4 seemed like a revolution only a week ago. Now, Stable Diffusion V2 is out. The space just evolves so quickly. So it does feel that way. It's almost like uh, Moore's Law. This thing's going exponential. And we're going to see some interesting uh, effects of that. Uh, from just an overall general perspective. Strange thing also commenting on uh, V4 of Midjourney. Uh, using V4 for modern era art as it's not quite got that oil painting texture of the Renaissance just yet. So it's almost like he's adjusting now to V4 and maybe it's not as easy to get that oil texture as it was on V3. It's getting there with certain prompts, so very interesting. And yeah, you do see uh, oil painting quality, but maybe not that Renaissance oil painting quality, but it is getting there. So very interesting update from Strange Thing and Charles AI on the new tech in AI art. And look at this, back to the AI fashion. Like again, it's like, if I'm Nike, I'm just going, why don't we just hire this guy? Why don't we just give this guy $100,000 a year and he just works for us if he's willing to do that, you know, or we contract him out. Like, I mean, this is just way too much fun. Varsity jacket, anyone made by AI? Like it's a good looking jacket, isn't it? So super interesting fashion designer artist, I'm tempted to call him. Young Carbaggio with a very nice uh, work. The Oracle, if you could see the future, you'll see a lot of the past, very poetic, very nice work. It's a one of one for 1300 Tezos, which might sound expensive, but you know what? AI art uh, has a market, so this could go. Uh, so Young Carbaggio with a very, very nice portrait here. And Red Rum on the golf course with some Tyrannosaurus in red. So just a really interesting, you see the matte, the matte quality of this. So, which we see in Charles AI, Delta Sauce. We're actually gonna see some more of those works. So interesting matte quality here. Uh, and just reminding people, he has works on super rare. And I also want to look at Ninfa IO, which I've never heard of. Multi-category curated boutique for your Digital identity, 0% primary fees. So that's kind of funny, right? First they wanted to get rid of royalties for artists and now they're saying, you know what? You don't even need to pay fees if you come on our platform. <laughs> so, so how the tables have turned, my friends. <laughs> Another one from Joanne, who we looked at yesterday. I want to call her Joanne. Joanne, uh, just another beautiful work. She combines painting with AI. 
very, very, very promising. It would be interesting to see her take it to the next level uh, with physical painting. Like you print this out and then maybe you start printing over top of it, or sorry, painting over top of it. Take that to the next level. Uh, Chelsea, who I've never seen before, Ocello is the Twitter handle. Very nice piece here. You know, someone having coffee and this double coffee here. Again, just almost like uh, where you're seeing time switch here, like you're seeing a por two portraits of time, but with zero lines in between, like you'd see in cubism. So interesting, interesting, beautiful work. Uh, looks like a Parisian cafe. Uh, may I grace your timeline? I meant to post this, so using mid-journey. Uh, so here's Delta Sauce. Speaking of coffee, a little coffee place. Again, very matte quality and almost combining outdoor and indoor elements. This looks like it could be indoors when you look at the plant, but then you see the kiosk here and it looks like maybe it's outdoors. It's ambiguous, actually, isn't it? Is this a window or is this a mirror? Yeah, interesting. And a work by Charles AI, again, that very matte quality, super matte. Uh, and shooting star, and a very poetic shooting star here. I've never seen a shooting star. It's always on, a, on an angle. It's always on a diagonal. So maybe the AI provided that. Robness V2, more AI. Reserves have been hit for both these. Thanks, y'all, for supporting. So these kind of QR code cowboys is what I want to call them. Pretty cool. Here are a lot chunkier pixels. So fun experimentation on the AI front. And this also brings up a topic that we were discussing, which is the barriers to entry. So Gordo is fairly new on doing these kind of works. And of course we think of strange thing and it seems to be a tribute. It's called Salute and Greetings to the King and Brotherhood. So this seems to be a tribute. And of course, strange thing often puts red wine uh, emojis. So this seems to be a tribute to strange thing but you see how gordo is getting pretty close it's kind of on his way to getting this kind of strange thing effects this is something we've discussed many or a couple of times now which is the barriers to entry right and even uh who was it rune tune and i think lewis had big comments on this just a couple of days ago which we'll have to bring up because this and it is going to come back up I'm sure the barriers to entry. So we were saying once you kind of have your thing and it kind of looks like strange thing has its thing, but then all of a sudden someone can do almost the same thing within weeks. So, and here is some of Gordo's other work, AI artist. So just kind of interesting. And it is selling like see edition of 10, it's almost all sold out here. So it, it you know, like we've been discussing this and here we're seeing it, you know, some very nice work, you know, uh, so here is Salute, and here's Big Brother. So another work by Gordo. So interesting. And again, these AI distortions in the faces that we've also been discussing, which are quite pleasant in a weird way. And I, mean, I don't know if pleasant is the right word, but which you, know, you increasingly have an aesthetic affection for. Maybe that's too strong of a word. And here you just remove the face. Uh, so another solution for the face. Very nicely rendered piece here. Young Carvaggio working with his Michelangelo shoes. So just a couple of more, again, fairly matte, which is interesting. I mean, Strange Things works, those oil paintings don't have as matte of a feeling. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe that's harder to get that shininess or that kind of vibrance, right? Uh, here's young Carvaggio and he has some other shoes as well. And of course we looked at that portrait earlier and you know, AI fashion all over. Tons of shoes here. They're really cheap because they're high editions, so you can add to your collection. 0009, very nice kind of negative space here. GM, so very nice. Shout out to him. He's thank you. He gave a big thanks for being on the show, I think, yesterday. So shout out to 0009. You are here again. And another AI artist who we haven't looked at yet, Nicola Villa. And what I really liked about this piece is how there's video in here. Right. This is all, you know, it's reminiscent of LB and uh, Side Hustle, how they'll put like video within a GIF and, you know, glitch video. So anyways, cool work, empty frame here, very moody. And look at the everything that's going on here. Mid-journey, digital collage, painting and animated GIF. 
So very cool and sold for 80 Tezos. So again, that very strong AI market. Nicola Villa is participating. And this is just someone I saw on Instagram who I've kind of seen for a while who I thought was just kind of good. Kate Mary Art, just as we kind of are always looking to defy any lines, you know, we're showing physical art here, we'll show a little bit of Instagram, you know. So anyways, just very cool kind of, here's like some more kind of gouache. Uh, it looks like acrylic paint on paper, so kind of watered down acrylic paint. Anyways, Cape Mary Art on Instagram. And that, my friends, is your show. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, take care. <laughs>